This is the sound of Manoa DNA, one of Hawaii's hottest and favorite bands. They got started at a local restaurant in 2005 and have been on an upward spiral since, locally on the mainland and in Japan. They have been representing Hawaii as ambassadors of aloha and goodwill, especially in Japan, with their soothing harmony and casual demeanor. My great-grandparents Fukutaro and Hisa emigrated to Kauai from Fukuoka Prefecture in the late 1890s. Both were very entrepreneurial, and after leaving the plantation on Kauai, Fukutaro worked as a stevedore, peddled charcoal, raised pigs, and finally started a general store. My grandpa, Keiji Kawakami, was born in Eleele, and my grandma, Edith, in Koloa, Kauai. Grandma's parents, the Nomis, came from Hiroshima Prefecture. When World War II started, Keiji volunteered for the military and was part of the 442nd Go For Broke Regimental Combat Team, serving in Italy and France. After being discharged, he took advantage of the GI Bill and decided to go to NYU for his MBA in marketing. Upon graduating, he worked at Gimbel's, one of the major department stores in New York at the time. Grandma and Grandpa were married by then and wanted to return to Hawaii and raise their family. They already had two daughters, one of whom was born in New York. Upon returning, Grandpa worked in the import-export business with his friend, buying out the business when the friend decided to leave. This was in 1953, when KG and Edith started Iolani Sportswear and the year my dad, Lloyd, was born. The business was located on Baratania Street in a small two-room duplex and started with four seamstresses and a cutter. My dad used to do the cutting, but because he was such a bad cutter, the girls told him, please don't cut. So, <laughs> so he became the delivery guy. I do remember though, for some reason, uh, as a toddler, I used to be put in a playpen in the spare room. And part of that, that floor was actually dirt. So when, and the roof used to leak. So whenever it rained, the floor would always turn to mud. The Iolani name was derived from Iolani Palace, which was visible at the time from the Baratania Street location. Grandpa was a creative genius and had the foresight to bring something different to Hawaii's garment industry, an aloha shirt made with solid fabric. He hired a graphic designer, Jackson Morisawa, who had no textile experience, yet taught himself to design a solid aloha shirt and went on to create a whole line of Iolani aloha shirts. The embroidery, applique, Silk screening and stitching on the shirts have endured for decades. There's another name, Kiyomi, that became symbolic with Iolani's unique line. She was brought to the team to do high-end dresses, which are still treasured today as classics. As Iolani started to grow, the business moved to Makaloa Street behind the CS Wool building and things took off again. Dad, as a boy, spent many after-school hours playing with a silkscreen dryer while he waited for Grandma and Grandpa to finish work. The fabric used to come uh, rolled up with and, and take pieces of silkscreen fabric and lay them over these dolls and stick them in this little box. And for some reason it always fascinated me because I, you know, uh, it never burned and everything came out just perfectly uh, cured and dried. Iolani continued to grow, so much so that in 1963 they moved operations to Kona Street where they are now. Although dad had his heart in music, grandpa talked him into taking over the family business. He finally convinced me that this would be a great opportunity and I think he just felt that uh, there are a lot of things that um, not so much be successful with but uh, life's lessons that, that 
I would be able to learn, especially in that business, because it's a very tough business. The business prospered well into the 90s and 2000s. And by then, the Aloha shirt was a global commodity and a huge event outside of Hawaii. When that happened, then we saw a huge influx of, uh, of foreign companies coming in with their product and into our market. So I think what that created was a very low cost environment. And so many of our companies have had to seek low cost production offshore. And um, um, a lot of the factories closed. And so now they basically import their, their goods on their local labels. As a result, many garment factories in Hawaii shuttered their doors, and today, most Hawaiian apparel is imported to supply the local market. Iolani is still the oldest remaining apparel manufacturer, which produces most of its garments in Hawaii. Along with convincing Dad to stay at Iolani, Grandpa also instilled in him a sense of social responsibility. My dad was one of the first to implement a, a profit-sharing plan and he funded it by uh, contributing our Iolani building into the employee profit sharing plan, which was unheard of back in the day. Keiji Kawakami was instrumental in organizing the Japanese American Research Center at the HJCC, which published Jang Kenpo in 1973 by Dr. Dennis Ogawa. Dad's love for music led him to become a promotional musician with Hawaiian Airlines during his college years. By a stroke of luck, Dad, my brother and I were asked to play at a new restaurant in Ward Center back in 2005. It seems all so natural and easy, but Dad was a slave driver, putting us through music boot camp. We'd get so mad at him that we wouldn't speak to him for days. As for the name, Manoa DNA, Mom came up with it. She is still our greatest fan and cheerleader. People always ask me, how did you get that name? Because it's kind of unusual. Well, Manoa is where we live, Manoa Valley. That's where uh, I was born and raised. And that's where my boys were raised. And the DNA actually stands for Dad, Nick, and Alex. When you ask people, Oh yeah, the DNA is the thread of life, and you know they get all they get all starry-eyed. I say no, it actually stands for Dad, Nick, and Alex, and they kind of blink and they go, "Yeah, I knew that." <laughs> My mom, Carla Kawakami, now runs Iolani Sportswear while we're on the road, and Dad will be forever grateful to her for this. Mom was a quick learner as she got into the competitive and complex world of the garment industry. Father and sons have been blessed with opportunity to spread Hawaii's aloha abroad, especially in Japan. Manoa DNA has been associated with Hawaii Tourism Japan and played in large cities such as Tokyo, Sendai, Yokohama, Osaka, Fukuoka, and Hiroshima. After the March 11, 2011 earthquake that shook Japan, Manoa DNA went to the Tohoku region with Hawaii Tourism Japan to deliver humanitarian aid and participate in fundraising for the victims. The first generation came to Hawaii from Fukuoka and Hiroshima. 
The second generation founded Iolani Sportswear, a pillar in Hawaii's garment industry. And the third generation is maintaining the family business while spreading goodwill in the land of their ancestors. The fourth generation will leave their mark in Hawaii's music industry and went full circle by taking their music back to where the Kawakamis and Nomis came from. The Honolulu Japanese Chamber of Commerce is proud to honor Lloyd Kawakami and his family and wish both Iolani Sportswear and Manoa DNA even more success in the future. Another so, so.